Hi folks, Navid Saberi here from Edinburgh Endodontist. Um, we are continuing with our mini lectures on traumatic dental injuries today and uh, today we will go through extrusive luxations. So yesterday uh, we talked about subluxation and some of the stuff we talked about you know we'll also cover what we will you know talk about today. Extrusive luxations or extrusions are those where a partial displacement of a tooth out of the socket in an axial direction has taken place. So it is not a lateral sideways coronal. The tooth literally just comes out of the socket within that direction uh, axially. Clinically, the tooth appears longer than the adjacent teeth. It will be mobile and the bite will be propped open, preventing the patient to fully occlude. As you can see in this close-up photograph, um, you can see that this tooth is elongated and you've got a bit of cleavage and also you've got a fracture injury. This could be a combination, this could be concussion as well can see the you know, fracture injury here clearly. So um, it is important as we've you know, discussed time and time again, that you fully examine all the hard and soft tissues, make sure you find out what has happened to that fractured piece of tooth, whether it's in soft tissues or not. So despite the fact that you've got, a, by looking at it, you may have a worse injury, you don't know what is, happen in the other teeth, so you need to do a full examination. Now we start to see radiographic changes. You should be able to detect PDL widening. So if you look at this radiograph, you can see the PDL widening across. Um, and it really depends on the degree of extrusion. So the, the, the more extruded the tooth is, the more of the PDL and socket you can see. And in severe cases, you can actually see the entire outline of the of the socket. To manage extrusion in primary teeth, if mild, uh, which is less than three millimeters, give or take, either leave it to reposition itself or reposition. But please remember how and where the developing permanent successors are positioned. These primary teeth, again, depending on age, because as the child gets older, they start, you know, resorbing, uh, but they usually have a labial curvatures on the root. So usually the luxation happen away from the permanent tooth, uh, tooth germ. But check it all clinically uh, and take all these factors into account if you are to reposition these teeth. In severe cases, i.e. over three millimeters, either, again, reposition or extract. Again, depending on the age of the child and for how long you will estimate that the child will be without the front tooth. Not just for aesthetics, but also for, you know, um, space main, uh, maintenance. If local anesthetic is impossible, consider inhalation sedation. GA is really pushing it, it's really last resort, but you know, make sure you try all the other options and you know, methods first. In permanent teeth, reposition the extruded tooth under local, gentle but firm uh, pressure is required. Uh, check the occlusion ask the patient to bite together, check the back teeth to make sure the back teeth are, are contacting, splint temporarily, and then take a check radiograph to make sure the tooth is fully repositioned in the socket. And please make sure that you check this um, uh, before you put the definitive splint on. Um, and if you think you're struggling to reposition, just check and do your examination again and make sure that your diagnosis is correct so you don't have another type of injury that may need a different sort of manipulation for repositioning. When you confirm the position, you put the flexible splint, um, 
and advice on normal brushing. And if you have lacerations and they're extensive, do a 50-50 chlorhexidine water down for five to seven days, then monitor the pulpal health. So again, don't jump into root canal treatment. And if you recall for the you know, first series of the fracture injuries and up to now, we haven't really talked about the direct root canal treatment straight away, uh, you know, for the majority of these traumatic dental injuries. So do not just jump into, uh, you know, carrying out root canal treatment in these teeth. But you will monitor. You'll monitor to see if you get changes to tell you that, oh, well, okay, now I've got a situation in which I will require to provide root canal treatment, either for restorative purposes. Uh, and if you recall, when we were talking about um, you know, complicated crown fracture or um, a root fracture. Uh, we 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 talked about this. Then monitor pulpal health um, uh, when you get the patient back. Uh, and as explained already, you know, tooth discoloration is not unexpected. So reassure the patient and the parent about this, and do not start root canal treatment just because of discoloration you need two clear-cut signs of an infected necrotic pulp for this. Remember, a good tip for repositioning, uh, you just need to use a gentle but firm digital pressure and use a watch winding motion back and forth to go through any clotting in the apex. So sometimes you cannot position it because of that clot. So you need to be a bit firm and you need to just break through it by very, very gentle rocking watch winding movement. Uh, use a gauze or a cotton roll for the patient to bite uh, on, uh, which usually helps, uh, especially when you check the repositioning. And uh, also it helps if you go and watch the clip on the clinical repositioning of uh, the extruded teeth on the Dental Trauma UK website's members. Uh, area. Now splinting is necessary. Uh, so it was not the, it's not case dependent uh, as we discussed, for example, for subluxation. Uh, you need a two week flexible splint and use ortho wire and include only one uninjured tooth on either side. And uh, you can see the result on this slide. The first close-up um, photograph shows, as we've already seen, an extrusion and a fracture injury. Again, you know, this may, may have been concussed as well. We don't know. So these two teeth have been injured. And when you look at the radiograph, it confirms it as well. Not that you need confirmation, but it will confirm that you've got widening of the PDL, so you can somehow see the outline of the socket. Now, you reposition, and you can see that before the splint has been placed, you check to make sure that the tooth and the root is fully repositioned in the socket, so it will look as if nothing has happened, okay? If you see PDL, you go back in, you try to reposition again you should not be able to see any PDL. Then it is the time for you to provide your definitive splint. Before that, if you do not see this, you do not put this on. If you see it looks like this, or it's only just reduced, you do not put this. You go back, reposition, and then go back to put your definitive splint. And as you recall, both of these two teeth uh, were involved. This has been repositioned. The maxillary uh, left incisor repositioned. This has been restored, restored. And you get one uninjured tooth and one uninjured tooth on either side. You see spot, um, spot edge bond and composite and ortho wire. And you've already seen the clip, the clinical clip on the repositioning and splinting. If not, again, please go to Dental Trauma UK website 
and uh, watch the video clips. To monitor, you just monitor the pulp basically and uh, the, the teeth and the periodontal structure and the root as you, you do for all the monitoring of the traumatized teeth. Do your base reading and uh, pulp sensibility testing when the patient comes back in a couple of weeks. I personally get them back after a week if it is possible for reassurance. Sometimes 48 hours, depends on the patient, depends on the parents, depends on the situation. And then at the, all the subsequent appointments, you uh, double check the pulp status. The timing should be two weeks for splint removal, and pulp test, then three, six, and 12, and then annually for five years. To sum up and recap uh, for concussions, reassure the patient and monitor uh, the tooth. No splinting is required for subluxation. Again, reassure and splint for two weeks if it is very tender, and then monitor. And for uh, extrusions, again, reassure, you know, uh, but in terms of the management and splinting, uh, place a um, flexible splint for two weeks, uh, but after proper repositioning and confirmation by, uh, by radiograph. Check your bite, place the splint, and you know, uh, reassure with regards to the discoloration. Great, so thank you again for watching this clip. Uh, tomorrow we will talk about uh, lateral luxations, please check Dental Trauma UK website and uh, watch the clinical clips on repositioning and splinting. I'll speak with you all tomorrow. Until then, stay safe, take care, and goodbye.